There's nothing an insect doesn't do. And so you can always find something you love. Insects are, you know, the canary in the coal mine. So many things depend on insects. You know, they're really at the bottom of many, many food chains, right? My heart is with the bugs. A fanny pack is, is a good way to keep your butterflies close at hand. So we have flat uh, spade-like forceps for collecting butterflies so we can hold their wings. And we do a very, very high-tech band-aid box. This is a resurvey of historical data that was collected about 25 years ago here in Washington and Seattle on the Pyrus rapi butterfly, which is a cabbage white butterfly. What we're looking at as a team is looking at how this particular butterfly has responded to climate change. I see nothing. I'm not seeing anything flying right now. There's gonna be one butterfly. There's nothing, it's just all bumblebees. This, this is uh, ecology <laughs> research. To the T, though. <laughs> I have to say, this is exactly like this is so classic. Oh yeah. Should we head back? Yeah, let's head back. Yeah, that's a cabbage right. We get it. We gotta get it. Cabbage right. Come on, Taylor. Let's do it. Our one butterfly. It's a female too. I'm not gonna move very much. And so the butterfly is now in the net here. And this is a female. I'll show you how I know it's a female. And so the females have fatter abdomens and they have actually a little hole in it, the abdomen for the egg laying. And then you can hold the body. And if I open up the wings, you can see, I don't know how well you see that, but the female has two dots on her forewing inside the wing. And that's it. And that's a female butterfly. That's kind of what our aim is, to get the females, because obviously they're the egg layers. One butterfly. There should be more if there is one. <laughs> Did you get it? No, it's running your way. Did you get it? Yep. Woohoo! Yay. Let's see what sh they are. Nice work, Taylor. That's two butterflies. I also was the one who originally collected this data 20, 25 years ago as a lab tech. And now we're repeating that project again to see if we see any changes associated with climate change. It helps us understand EVO mechanics, like how things change and evolve as temperature changes, as climate changes. Taylor, who's uh, the lab tech on this project now, is essentially me 25 years ago. I wanted to show these to you. This was the evolution of my keeping of journals, which I still do to this day. I was trying to figure out when I started, right, mm -hmm. started this job, and I did look back, and I saw that, so before I came here, I worked at Kinko's. That was the only job I could get. My last day of torture. Me in overalls. Look, I, could, I put, I was weighing caterpillars. Shows you how long I weighed caterpillars. Mm -hmm. And then I had this cute little picture of us weighing caterpillars. But you can see I kind of like check caterpillars, fix databases. Anyway, so that gives you just sort of a, image of, of image of 25 years ago. Yeah. And what, what we were doing at the same time now, 25 years later, at the exact same age. Mm -hmm, that's look, awesome. you could look, you could be doing this 25 years from now. I'll be 75, <gasps> so. Um, and we'll bring you in too. <laughs> multiple generations. Yeah, multiple generations. And we can do it again 25 years from yeah. now if we're 
planet isn't on fire. So thinking about generationally how we deal with the question of climate change. Unfortunately, a huge amount of the burden, in my personal opinion, lies on the next generation on what's going to happen. I think that we see by a lot of the research that's been published in the last, even just this year, that's looked at massive losses of populations in the insect world. And if that doesn't scare the hell out of you, I don't know what will. So we can look at a very specific response to changes in temperature. And it will help us make some predictions about how other organisms might do the same thing. And so I would not be surprised if this specific butterfly has been able to shift. It may give us some sense of what organisms have the ability to respond to environmental changes. Some organisms may be better than others. And I tell pretty much anyone I get a chance to, is how important it is that we get involved locally as much as we possibly can, that we start changing our behavior, just like our butterflies are changing their behavior, right? Changing the way they grow and eat. We need to change the way that we live on this planet.